and welcome to our special show on World Sleep Day. I'm Gargi Rawat. What do you do to stay healthy? Eat the right kind of food, exercise regularly. What if we told you that to stay healthy, it's just as important to sleep? Sleep of the right length in the correct way and of good quality. Sleep is your body's way of recharging its batteries. Sadly, our lifestyles today are often getting in the way of proper sleep and many people don't get enough sleep at night. We've turned into night owls who often fight sleep because of the prevalence of mobile phones and other addictive screens in our lives. But irregular and adequate sleep is as bad for our body as junk food. The impact on our health is far ranging. Mental health problems like depression and anxiety, physical like diabetes, cardiac disease, obesity, high blood pressure, a weakened immune system and impairments like memory issues, mood changes and trouble with concentration, the list is endless. Now it's essential to understand that sleep is vital and to be aware that you can give yourself the best chance of a good night's sleep. What better day than World Sleep Day to discuss how sleep is your superpower. Welcome to this special show, NDTV and Duroflex coming together to advocate and raise awareness for better sleep quality and health. On our panel today, we have Matthew Chandy, Managing Director, Duroflex, Dr. Manveer Bhatia, Senior Neurologist and Sleep Specialist, Dr. Ashok Seth, Chairman Fortis Escorts Heart Institute, Head of Cardiology, Council of Fortis Group of Hospitals, and uh, joining us is Ira Trivedi, Yoga Acharya. Thank you all for joining us on the program. I'd like to start with you, Matthew Chandy. The last two years have forced people, for one reason or the other, to think of their health much more. And as part of that, do you think people are taking sleep more seriously now as a health benefit? Hi, Gargi, and thanks for partnering with us to uh, spread the good word about sleep. Uh, no better day than uh, today, which is World Sleep Day. Um, certainly over the last two years, we've seen the uh, people taking their sleep much more seriously. Uh, the pandemic has forced us to think about comorbidities and the poor lifestyle choices we make, which lead to some of these comorbidities. So really people have started thinking about the importance of sleep for their immunity, uh, the importance of sleep for vaccine efficacy, um, and are really doing much more to focus on better health uh, better sleep and of course uh, some of the serious incidences incidents we saw recently with uh, uh, Gautam Reddy and Puneet Rajkumar uh, really shocked us into thinking about the importance of health and sleep uh, and how important it is so so yeah I think the pandemic has really boosted uh, the conversation around the superpowers of sleep Right, and how health is wealth, and yes, comorbidities, I think, is one of those words that become so common in these last two years. Dr. Seth, so tell us more about the link between lack of sleep and our heart health. You know, I think uh, sleep is not a luxury. Sleep is a necessity. We must remember that. And for, all, you know, for a long time, we've been emphasizing the risk factors for heart disease. And everybody knows that that's related to smoking, diabetes, obesity, hypertension, stress, etc., but can you believe it that we've actually excluded and not emphasized enough on the most important risk factor and which is sleep? For example, if you just have to understand the fact that the heart is a muscle pump and continues to beat every second, multiple minutes, multiple hours throughout our life, and we just need to give it rest. After all, it's, a, it's, it's there. And you, do, you, do you realize that actually at night, when the heart rate goes down, when the blood pressure goes down, heart is getting a rest. It's getting rejuvenated for the next day. So that is the clear mechanism. And it's not just a hypothesis. It's actually a proven mechanism which prevents heart disease. And therefore, more recently, we've been emphasizing the fact that all this issue about, you know, I'm all motivated, I'm actually an achiever, the less I sleep, the more time I have to achieve is actually a real myth. Those who sleep less than seven hours have a greater chances of heart attack and a greater chances of dying. And let me explain why. It has clearly been shown that inadequate sleep, the three aspects of sleep that we as cardiologists emphasize and are very concerned about. One is the fact that lack of sleep causes increase in weight, is known to cause increase in blood pressure, is also known to cause diabetes, can cause inflammation of the arteries, and can precipitate heart attacks, even in normal individuals. In those who already have heart disease, lack of sleep itself can cause heart attacks, can cause heart failure. 
that's also recognized. Right. And third, thirdly, the quality of sleep correlates with high blood pressures at night. And if the blood pressure goes up at night, it is one of the clear predictors of bad outcomes in people. So high blood pressure during the day is not so bad. And that's the one which we are treating commonly. High blood pressure at night, when you're supposed to have low blood pressure, is a much bigger predictor of having heart disease and deaths from heart disease. And that's what happens in lack of sleep. And finally, there are sleep disorders like obstructive sleep apneas, which clearly relate to arrhythmias, which clearly relate to heart failure, which clearly relate to heart attacks and death. So we are actually in a conundrum saying and emphasizing now these days that sleep is most important, equally important as smoking, as obesity, as diabetes, as hypertension to prevent heart disease as well as heart attacks. Now, Dr. Bhatia, to begin with, many people think of sleep as an optional activity. There is a statistic that says India is the second most sleep deprived country in the world. Can you tell our viewers how lack of, imp of proper sleep directly impacts our health? So the lack of sleep can affect all aspects of health. You know, we, we now know that lack of sleep can affect the physical health. That means it can make you more prone to get a heart attack brain strokes, diabetes, blood pressure. It can also affect your emotional health. And that means your mood, happiness, joy, sadness. It can also affect depression. It can also cause lack of sleep, can cause depression, anxiety, and also affect your productivity, creativity, learning, memory, decision-making, multitasking. So it's let's say that sleep is like a base, a foundation, a pillar on which other pillars of health stand. And if we deprive ourselves of sleep, all these functions can get affected. All right. So the importance of sleep then, it's, uh, you know, given that how much we praise uh, leaders who have very little sleep and we're told, oh, they just sleep four hours and, you know, they wake up and they're working. Uh, so it's interesting to know so much about the importance of sleep for our health. But Ira Trivedi, let's get you in, in, in here. Uh, in the practice of yoga, what significance does sleep have? It, a lot of significant as actually and in yoga, we do have techniques, for example, yoga nidra, which is yogic sleep. And it allows you to go into a state of deep conscious rest, which will then allow you to relax either before sleeping or give your brain the same signals as sleep. So 20 minutes of yoga nidra done at any point in the day is usually equal to around three hours of deep sleep. This also goes back to napping. You know, um, it's, I kind of, call yoga nidra as a sophisticated form of napping. Because sometimes if you nap, you know, you go into a sleep state, then when you wake up, you're very lethargic. So yoga nidra keeps you at that really correct place of deep rest. And we sometimes need this in the beginning, in the middle of the day. Often when people wake up early, they work very hard in the day, they have a lot of stress. So just that 20 minutes of yoga nidra can really help support us. Um, so sleep is fundamental to the practice of yoga. In fact, I do believe it is one of the yogic superpowers. I always say there's five yogic superpowers and one of these superpowers is sleep and entering into that date state, sleep, uh, date state of um, rest and restoration. Definitely yoga propagates sound sleep. Also, the quality of the sleep is very important, maintaining circadian rhythms. So, you know, sleeping at a proper time and waking up at a proper time. So a common thing that we say is that any sleep, which is before midnight, is actually equivalent to two hours of sleep. So if you go to sleep at 10 p.m., then 10 to 12, two hours is worth four hours because the quality of sleep is better. The biggest interfere to sleep is actually late night television that people are watching. Right. And when they go to sleep, they go to sleep with those impressions in their mind. And that causes not very relaxed sleep. So I think what's also very important to think about is the frame of mind that we go to sleep with. So it's always important to go to sleep with a positive frame of mind. And that's why before sleeping, a little bit of meditation, a little bit of breathing practices can actually make those same hours of sleep more productive. So it's a, it's a, it's more, it's, you're packing more into the punch. 
All right, that, that's absolutely fascinating. And talking about the quality of sleep, uh, Matthew Chani, tell us about sleep hygiene. What are some of the signs of poor sleep hygiene? And what are the sleeping aids that can help us improve that? Yeah, I think, uh, I think our panelists have said it so well. Uh, sleep, is, sleep is so important. Um, some of the uh, telltale signs of poor sleep, I think uh, I'm certainly guilty of many of them. Um, a lot of people think they get great sleep because they fall asleep as soon as they sit in a car. Um, some people think they get great sleep because they fall asleep as soon as, as, soon as they start watching TV uh, or if a, a meeting goes on for too long. But I think these are actually all signs that uh, your body is tired, your body is probably sleep deprived. Um, and an indication that you're not getting enough uh, quality uh, quantity and consistency of, of sleep. So I think uh, there are certainly a number of really useful, simple aids that uh, people can use to get much better sleep. Um, one is really paying attention to the, the hygiene uh, in the bedroom. So uh, it's well known that a darker room helps you to sleep longer and deeper. Um, a cooler room helps you to sleep uh, longer and deeper. Um, a quieter room, so with as little noise or disturbance as possible. Um, and like Ira said, I think going to sleep after following a good wind down routine, uh, okay. a little bit of meditation, a little bit of quiet time, uh, getting off your gadgets uh, at least a couple of hours before falling asleep. Um, and obviously, um, you know, sleeping on a good bed, a good mattress, a mattress <laughs> which has uh, uh, able to provide you the, the right level of uh, support and comfort to, to keep you in sleep, in deep sleep as long as possible. Right. Um, and, 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 you know, we, we spend a disproportionate amount of time and money uh, researching um, all of these aspects because, because it's so crucial to provide your body the right level of support and comfort uh, to keep you sleeping once you've fallen asleep. Well, uh, we'll slip into a short break right now and return uh, with the more and we'll speak to our guests more about the importance of sleep and its connection to our health. Welcome back to our special show on World Sleep Day. And we're now going to talk about a very important aspect of sleep. And Dr. Said, this question is for you. There are different schools of thought about the ideal number of sleeping hours or the minimum number of sleeping hours needed for proper functioning. So, so tell us, uh, what is the right amount of sleep that's required for a healthy lifestyle? You know, I'd start off by saying that uh, in the present competitive world, it's uh, sometimes a bit of a... Uh, you know, I, and I also relate this to my own self uh, during, you know, when I was in the early part of my career, I would uh, actually believe that if I think if I slept anything more than five hours, I was being unfair to what I had to achieve. And when I got to six hours, I would say, my God, this has been not, I'm moving towards disastrous life. It's this is what I want to avoid and put this message on to everyone who's now in a at a, at a at a young age and in competitive world who believes that it's actually in some form of a superiority to say that I only sleep for five hours because I just work so hard or I sleep only for six hours. I think that's so, so, so you know, one has to move away from that to say, I'm proud that I actually sleep for more than seven hours. Um, now, you know, the, the average sleep time has to be no less than seven hours. And the quality of sleep becomes equally important because in that seven hours has to be a good quality sleep. So we would define it saying at least seven hours of good quality sleep. Now, there's been data to show, by the way, that if you actually sleep very long, that's also not good. Okay. It's been associated with heart attacks. It's been associated with... Uh, it's been correlated, and I won't say causative right. phenomenon, but it's been associated with heart attack. And perhaps it's because anybody who sleeps for nine, 10 hours at a stretch is perhaps doing it because he's got other comorbidities. There may be too much of stress, tiredness. There could be actually pathological situations in which one could actually speak, sleep longer. And of course, it leads to less activity, being overweight, and so on and so forth. So the balance is, is somewhere between seven to eight hours. So it could differ from individuals. And we're talking about, by the way, I've got to emphasize this, we're talking about 
young people. We're not talking about that. We're talking about people who are 60, 70 should be sleeping more than seven hours and should not be less than seven hours. We're talking about even in your most productive ages of 18 to 60, your sleep should be regulated to at right. least seven hours of good sleep. And by the way, we actually still do want to emphasize that is the quality of sleep which matters. You know, remember I said sleep causes, in, lack of sleep causes increase in weight. Lack of sleep causes less productivity. Lack of sleep means that you're not giving rest to your body and the heart which it actually needs, that you're pushing it. It actually therefore translates into bad control of diabetes, bad control of hypertension. The very risk factors which we worried about right. all the time, which lead to heart, heart disease. So that is true. That and the quality of sleep relates to blood pressure. I mean, we are actually in a conundrum of a situation where, and this time, the last 15 years, our emphasis on two, which had been least in the past, which was stress. Remember, 10 years ago, we talked less about stress. We actually, there was less stress 20 years ago in everybody's mind. Do you know? that people sleep less by one and a half hours now than they used to around 20 and 25 years ago. That's universal figures. We're sleeping less. And that's the reason so you can why just we're imagine, having much more right. heart disease, much more deaths from heart disease, and certainly need to be really, really cautious around all these issues. And much more stress since you can't, you know, recharge your batteries. Uh, Matthew Chandy, uh, you know, you ran a campaign called Sounds of Sleep. So tell us about that and what was the kind of response you got? Uh, it was one of the most fun things we did last year. We, we realized that um, lullabies were a dying tradition uh, in India, that uh, all of us grew up with, really beautiful lullabies sung by our parents or uh, aunts and uncles. And um, that tradition was sort of dying out. So we ran a campaign called uh, Sounds of Sleep, where we resurrected uh, beautiful regional lullabies from uh, six different states in India. Um, we glamorized them. We got young, uh, dynamic playback singers to sing them. And we found um, it was a really nice way to reach out to uh, young parents, parents who, young new parents who who maybe didn't know these alibis or who wanted to find them, uh, and then and give them an opportunity to use them uh, to play them back for their their young children. Uh, actually, also it was a subtle way for us to emphasize the importance of a wind down routine before you go to sleep. A lullaby is a nice way to to slip into sleep or to slip into um, something like yoga nidra. Um, and uh, also emphasize the, the importance of the bonds that get formed uh, between a mother uh, and her child just before sleep or between an individual and his or herself just before they fall asleep. So that wind down routine, uh, cleaning your mind, calming down and, you know, quietly slipping into sleep was a very important thing. So, you know, as a, as a, as a campaign, it was wildly successful. It, it was watched and downloaded by 24 million uh, people last year. Right. Um, and, and this World Sleep Day, we are going to double down on this. In fact, we are uh, we've we've commissioned uh, some very talented artists to to write four new lullabies. So it's it's also our commitment to keep this beautiful tradition of of lullabies uh, going. Um, All right. Lo 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 lovely fun thing we did last <laughs> year, and we'll continue to do. All right. Uh, Ira Trivedi, there's a view in yoga on the right position to sleep. Tell us a bit more about that. So the best position to sleep is flat on your back. Okay, with your spine completely flat. And definitely a good mattress is important. I see a lot of problems caused by students. And these problems are actually because of bad mattresses. And uh, they're using mattresses that are too soft or too hard. So I do always tell people that invest in a good mattress and a good pillow because these actually help prevent a whole bunch of problems moving forward. So that's one. Um, if you aren't, can't sleep on your back, sleeping on your left or on your right side, usually with a pillow in between your knees. So some support um, that'll help support your lumbar spine. 
So sort of organizing yourself with a pillow in between the knees, maybe a pillow, um, you know, a, a thinnish flat pillow underneath your, uh, underneath your head, and maybe even a third pillow near your, near your heels and ankles. That can help create a good posture. The worst is to sleep on your stomach. You know, that is the worst kind of posture with your head on one side. So you'll often see people who are on their stomachs and their heads are like this on one side. This can actually cause a lot of cervical problems. So right. that is the worst way to sleep. So if you are sleeping on your stomach, then try to at least sleep on your side. But when it comes to digestion, when it comes to spinal health, for all of it, it's much better to sleep flat on your back or on the two sides. Um, it takes a little bit of training, but I promise you that just sleeping in the right position at, on the right mattress and with the right pillow, these three things can actually get rid of so many spinal issues, so many spinal issues. Right. So some, and these are chronic issues because remember you're spending eight hours of your day, hopefully seven to eight hours yeah. on this bed. So definitely investing in a good mattress is really, really important. You know, a small change like this can go a long way. I think everybody's agreed that devices is a big impediment to a you know good healthy sleep. And I think parents also need to be aware about this, about you know how it affects the quality of sleep because too many kids these days are also falling asleep with their devices in their hands. So if you could you know tell us about uh, how this affects our sleep and what can be done. Uh, how do the devices affect the sleep? Uh, yes, in a couple of ways actually. First and foremost is the light. Uh, the, the devices emit a light and a simple thing is that to fall asleep we need darkness. Why? Because when there is darkness the sleep inducing hormone that is the melatonin has to come up, rise to a peak and then gradually come down. And if we continue to keep any form of these lights on then we interfere with the release of melatonin. And that does what? That will interfere with the quality of sleep, duration of sleep, and also with the other mood elevating hormones, such as the serotonin, noradrenaline. So thus it leads to also a bad mood. So in other words, this light is not only interfering with the sleep, it's also going to affect our mood. An right. often heard statement by parents and the children and youngsters is that, you know, I'm on the screen because I'm not able to fall asleep. So if I could <laughs> sleep, I'd put the screens off. But it's the other way around. The longer you keep the light on, you will not, you will not let the sleep come, let's say. You're, you're stopping it. Second thing, these lights or these any gadgets that we are using at night, we are engaging so if you engage, you are inherently releasing the wake promoting chemicals. Okay. And you will not allow the sleep to come. If you are watching something alarming or anything that you are interacting or reading, that's going to interfere. Third is, of course, that like, you know, uh, Ira mentioned that if you keep your brain very alert and engaged right till the time that you put the lights off, the sleep quality is really bad. People wake up at two and three, they have bad dreams, they have nightmares. Then they come and tell us that, you know, I switched the light off, I switched the computer, but I can't fall asleep. Then they will take a pill. So it's a vicious cycle. Okay. Um, so you, there has to be a time where we end the day. Thank you so much all for joining us today thank on you. our special show and thank you all for watching at home. Goodbye.